All right, time for our Fiscal Focus segment, which is, as always, sponsored by InfoChoice, your choice of information on Australian consumer finance. Now, this week, we are focusing on credit card demand. With just over two months until Christmas, which is a traditional peak, of course, for consumer spending, um, many Australians are already relying on credit to manage cost of living pressures on household budgets, with credit card demand experiencing growth of 9.6% in the year to August. However... The rate of credit card applications has slowed since the start of this year, and it's a trend that's likely to continue if interest rates remain unchanged. And it's also a potential red flag for the retailers that are banking on holiday spending to keep their businesses afloat. Joining us to tell us more is the Executive General Manager at Equifax, Moses Samaha. G'day, Moses. Welcome to the Savings Tip Chart. Thank you for having me. I can't wait for this one, Moses, because uh, Christmas is just around the corner. Um, but can you explain sort of how we're looking in regards to uh, consumer spending in the lead up to Christmas um, and how much are uh, Aussies, you know, swiping or tapping or inserting their their uh, plastic uh, this this uh, last quarter? Yeah, for sure. Look, as Dom mentioned, um, we, we measure credit uh, card inquiries as over a long period of time. So for us, we see that as a proxy of demand. We have seen a softening of demand as we've progressed through the calendar year. Um, Q1 was really strong. There were a number of campaigns by the big card providers. We've seen that activity come off as we've progressed throughout the year. Um, some of that will be campaign driven, but I also imagine interest rates and cost of living challenges are really waking some people up to think about how much debt can they really afford and should they be thinking more prudently given some of the challenges uh, we have in the economy from a macro perspective. And, and I suspect that that will continue until we see some relief from a interest rate change. But I don't expect that to happen until early next year. And Moses, the, there's a bit of a difference in numbers sometimes that we see in the in the credit card numbers that come through from the uh, the, the RBA. Uh, and, uh, well, you know, it, it shows a breakdown between, you know, credit card applications, you know, the number of credit cards in circulation. Um, and then also just uh, credit card transactions. Now, I think what we've seen recently is um, potentially credit card um, you know, numbers in circulation is softening, but we're seeing more transactions on credit cards. How, how, how do you reconcile that? Look, it is hard to reconcile. Um, you know, there's been a longitudinal trend around a decline in uh, credit card accounts. You know, things like uh, buy now, pay later have, have been a substitute product for credit account accounts for some demographics. So there's been that challenge. There's been some regulatory changes on credit cards and how you can advertise. Um, so there's been some structural changes around volumes. Um, I would imagine your observation on uh, what's being spent on a card is interesting. Um, I suspect consumers are consolidating where their debts are. So that would naturally drive more spend in a particular card or a form of payment. So that doesn't surprise me. Um, and then that'll be interesting to see how that plays out over the next uh, two to three months for Christmas. I mean, typically that is the seasonal peak for credit cards, for buy now, pay later activity. You know, most people are out there shopping. I mean, you can go into a mall now and the Christmas decorations are about or, or there in some places. And I'd imagine retailers will be trying to lure customers in and that'll ultimately drive more transactions and potentially more demand for cards or payment mechanisms. For me, Moses, it's uh, it's actually pretty easy to reconcile uh, because Dom's making up for all the uh, shortfall in credit card spending with his uh, upcoming trip to to uh, Scotland. So he, he's swiping the plastic well and truly. Um, yeah, eight but, grand on flights, that hurt. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Um, so over seventy dollars in uh, in the, the credit card transaction fee, which I mentioned at the start of the podcast, that really hurt. <laughs> yeah, and there's lots of conversations on that, right? Consumers, because they've gone to a cashless, or you know, I'm not sure how many of us use cash, but I mean, cards are used a lot, and the the fees are pretty transparent. So I mean, they rack they rack up, don't they? Mm, yeah, yes. for sure. Um, you were kind of mentioning, um, and Dom was also mentioning the fact that um, that a large part of the reason why we're seeing kind of like like a change in uh, in consumer habits, I guess, with the credit card is due to interest rates uh, being high. But what I've noticed is that uh, credit card rates have been largely kind of immune to rate rises. You know, they're all around, you know, anywhere from ten to twenty percent is normal. Um, 
how, how does that factor in or, or are you more talking about the home loan rates uh, eating into people's budgets and capacity to spend on the credit card? Oh, look, <clears throat> there's no doubt that plays a role in terms of capacity. Um, you know, wage growth isn't anywhere near uh, moving in line with some of those pressures from a cost perspective. Um, look, interest rates still still play a role on credit cards. I mean, interest rate is a cost to, to, to a bank or to a card provider, as rates move, especially if they go up, they're going to pass on those rates. Um, y- yes, they're less immune because there is a large buffer. I mean, credit cards in general are a risky proposition for, for lenders or credit providers and they're pricing for that risk. Um, if costs do go up, they, will, they won't be shy in passing on those costs. And, you know, that's going to manifest itself in terms of challenges for if you can't afford to make your repayments on time, that's going to hurt. That's going to absolutely hurt. And Moses, what's happening with uh, credit card arrears at the moment? Um, obviously, uh, higher interest rates really hurting people um, in their mortgage repayments. Perhaps that's resulting in them, you know, failing to to meet their credit card repayments on time because I, I imagine they probably prioritize their mortgage repayments over their credit card repayments. So what are we seeing? Are we seeing an uptick in arrears for credit cards? Look, it's interesting. I mean, thus far, it's it's been moderately low compared to other forms of credit. So we've seen a higher or, or more problematic arrears rates in personal loans and auto loans. Now, having said that, as we go into this fourth quarter of the year, we typically see a rise. So for the for, for consumers who take on credit cards in the fourth quarter, that, that seems to be a more sensitive uh, period and a window, and we do see an increase in arrears rates for those customers than what we've seen in the prior quarters. And that's something we've seen over the last few years. Um, we typically note that younger consumers in a demographic of 18 to 25, they t- typically uh, ha- have a bigger challenge around this around this area and that's that's not surprising i mean they're typically earning less than more mature established consumers and um you know they've got to work their way through that christmas hump as they get into the new year and like i think equifax has published some research on this before moses um but it's the kind of like cascade of um i guess what people prioritize so can you explain that a bit like if uh say someone falls behind on their credit card Bill, is that kind of like a canary for maybe falling behind on the home loan or do people prioritise the home loan above all else and they they let other things go first? Yeah, I think I think they, they, you know, the canaries or the early signs uh, vary throughout the year. You know, typically, yes, people will prioritise their mortgage repayments. I mean, that is the, the shelter, roof over your house, or your home, all those sorts of things. Um, as we came out of the pandemic, you know, uh, increasing in credit card activity was was a good sign it actually showed that people had used up any surpluses any savings um, from government incentives and so forth and that showed that the economy was getting back to a steady state mm. now you know we're, we're, we've moved beyond the pandemic and um, it could be a, you know usage in credit card and credit activity can be a, an early indicator for other things now it's a fine balancing act. You know, are you, are you looking for a lead indicator for a positive thing or something that's more concerning? Are, are people extending themselves too much? And that's where arrears rates can be really interesting. So so the early indicators or, uh, will vary dur- during a particular cycle, but th- there's no doubt that there is a cascade, there is a hierarchy in terms of how consumers think about um, what's important to them. And it, that varies by age. Uh, you know, younger younger demographic will prioritise paying their their mobile phone plan over and beyond something else. So it also varies based on demographic and where you're at with your life stage. And what's important to you? Now, Moses, um, you know, a bit of a question without notice, but um, you piqued my interest earlier when when you mentioned just uh, before about um, you know buy now pay later, uh, somewhat eating into the, the credit card. Um, sector. Um, I wonder if that's starting to swing back the other way now, or if we've seen that happen um, over the past few months, because with we'd heard so much uh, earlier in the year about uh, reform uh, to buy now, pay later platforms, and, and then you know require, requiring them to do things like credit checks and, and other red tape being wrapped around. So I don't know, is Equifax, is, is the data showing anything to suggest that that, that is the case, that um, 
people, you know, the demand for buy now, pay later is softening and people are coming back to credit cards again? Look, what, what, it's a really good question and hot off the press. We've probably seen an early green shoot the other way. So for most of the year, we've, we've actually been seeing a declining trend in use of buy now, pay later. I mean, there's been massive market consolidation, uh, as you say, regulations coming into place, uh, and just the economics of some of these models has been challenged. So we've seen a a negative trend, but on an improving path. And, and um, I think in the month of September, actually, we've seen that trend reverse. Now, that, that could be part of this seasonal shift going into Christmas, uh, but there's definitely, again, for certain demographics, it, it is a substitute offering, um, but it's serving a similar sort of problem in terms of, you know, helping fulfil a need at a point in time. Um, but there's definitely, a, for some demographic, there's definitely been an interplay. Um, for others, uh, you know, quite mutually exclusive. For sure. And Moses, last one for you. Um, I think we kind of touched on it before, but it's people taking out um, or applying for credit cards in Q4 and how that could potentially be a red flag for falling behind on the statement in the future. Um, is this due to Christmas slash sort of Black Friday spending? And can you explain that a bit more? Because it's a really fascinating topic of mine. You know, like if I apply for a credit card now, you, you know, would that set off red flags for my bank or or whatever? Look, so, so applying for a card, does it set off a red flag? Look, potentially. I mean, it, it is called an unsecured credit. Um, you know, there are limit is pulled in place, but there's a risk you, you could, uh, you know, get to that limit really quickly. You know, th this end of year Christmas period is a period of high spend. Like uh, it, it is, it is unsurprising. You know, people are out in market. Retailers are trying to bring forward uh, sales activity. Uh, Boxing Day sales are brought forward almost a month, so the market is just setting itself up for transactions. And, and uh, card providers know that, right? So it's, it's an optimal period to be in market. Um, but provided you get a card and pay it on time, I wouldn't say there's a red flag. The, the, the risks are non-payment, and then that, that is absolutely creates issues for you in terms of how, how you think about your credit health and so forth. So getting back into a payment routine that's on time is super important. Uh, more, more important than actually getting the getting the card, if that makes sense. Now, I know we said that that was the last one, but um, how's this set me off now? And I've got a sort of a burning <laughs> question uh, that just while we got you here, um, I've always heard throughout the years um, from from mates of mine that are uh, you know looking to, to to buy a home soon or and apply for a mortgage. They they say, oh no, I've I've got to apply for a credit card because um, yeah, I've just got to start building up that credit history because I'm going to apply for a home loan soon, so I need to have that credit history. Is that really a thing? Like, is it is it really beneficial to 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 take out a credit card even if if you don't even need it because maybe it'll give you a better shot of being approved for a home loan? Look, not necessarily. I mean, a credit card, like I said, is an unsecured form of credit. Some lenders see it as a risk exposure. Um, when you're assessed for a home loan, uh, they will assess you on the assumption you're going to spend your full limit, right? You, you, so you may not spend the limit and you may pay it on time, but they're going to assume, worst case, you're spending the full limit. And at times it may benefit you shutting down that credit card as you apply for something like a home loan. So, look, it's, it's a fine balance in terms of whether you apply, size of the limit, uh, paying on time, but definitely when you're applying for a home loan, a lender will assume you'll spend the full limit. That's their worst case scenario, and they're going to judge you on that. So could you afford to pay the full limit and the home loan? Now, if, mm -hmm. if that challenges you, it, you may be encouraged to then close your credit card. We uh, certainly threw a lot at you in today's guest segment. Um, we really appreciate your thoughts and, yeah, some good food for thought uh, in the lead up to Christmas and uh, maybe – Think twice um, before swiping or tapping or inserting the uh, plastic with a 20% interest rate. And if you're in doubt about your credit history or your report, you know, you can head to Equifax and uh, and look at that one. So Moses, uh, thanks so much for joining us on the Savings Tip Jar podcast. Thanks for having me, guys.